Magandang hapon po sa lahat ng uh, SCB family. Pagpalain tayo ng Panginoong Diyos sa hapon ito. Muli po, maraming salamat sa pagkakataon na makapagbahagi ng salita ng ating dakilang Diyos na buhay. So sa hapon ito, ay gusto kong magbahagi ng uh, salita ng Panginoong Diyos at ito ay binigyan ko ng pamagat na Characteristics of Strong Prevailing and governing church. Sa ating pagpapasimula, tayo po ay sumandaling manalangin. Father, you are so faithful, you are so good, at patuloy po kami nagpapasalamat for your faithfulness and goodness sa amin pong mga buhay. So this afternoon, muli po, may pagkakataon kami na sama-samang mag-aral ng iyong mga salita. We acknowledge the presence of your Holy Spirit our great teacher and the author of the Bible. So sa ilang pong sandali, samahan niyo po kami at ikaw ang siyang magpakanghayan. Sa iyo po ang papuri, parangal at pagsamba sa pangalan ng Ama, ng Anak at ng Banay Espiritu. Amen and Amen. So, muli po, magandang hapon sa bawat isa. I hope na kayo po ay um, nasa ilalim ng Pag-iingat ng Panginoong Diyos at panguna ng Panginoong Diyos, uh, lalo na po sa mga panahon sa ngayon na hindi pa natatapos yung pandemya sa buong mundo maging sa ating bansang Pilipinas. And yet, nakita po natin na tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung pag-usad ng ating mga churches. Uh, kami nga po dito sa Pilar, uh, inalaala ko halos two months lang kami na Uh, walang tinatawag na uh, mass gathering and the rest simula nang tumama sa atin yung pandemya ito ay tuloy-tuloy pa rin po yung gawain in fact sa mga nakaraang buwan naghalos nagkaroon kami ng uh, three worship services per Sunday for almost two months so salamat sa Lord sa strength at uh, tayo Uh, mga churches ng Panginoong Diyos we continue to prevail in govern even amidst this pandemic so this afternoon again, ang pamagat po ng aking ibabahagi ay characteristics of a strong prevailing and governing church uh, marahil most sa aking ibabahagi ito po ay itinuro na sa atin ng ating uh, mentor pero napakasarap na ito ay balik-balikan no? i-meditate at mas lalo po nating naunawaan. No? Kaya this afternoon, ito po yung ating pag-uusapan. Characteristic of a strong prevailing and governing church. Ano nga ba ang strong church? What is a strong church? Well, based sa perception ng secular o ng mga tao, o siguro marahil, pati mga kristyano, ang isang church ay masasabing strong kapag meron silang attendance, kapag merong building, kapag merong cash. No? E nga, sabi nila, the ABC of a strong church. So kapag may marami ang umaten, no? maraming attenders, pwede sa palagay nila, no? malakas yung church na yon, matatag yung church na yon. Pero alam naman natin na hindi lahat ng mga churches, no? bagamat marami ang attenders ay masasabi nating malakas. So we all know na may mga churches na pinupuntahan ng mga tao kasi nakadepende doon sa kuminsan, doon sa kanilang ipinapahayag na salita ng Panginoong Diyos. Isang example natin diyan yung Sensitive Seekers Church. No? Kasi mostly yung approach nila, sa pagbabahagi ng Panginoong Diyos ay inspirational messages. So, sa pamamagitan ng approach na ito, there are times na nadidisregard yung tao kung paano siya namumuhay, especially if that person is living in sin. Kasi palagi lang inspirational yung message. Kaya most likely, mas marami yata para yung gustong makinig at dumalo doon sa mga churches na palagi nilang inspirational yung itinuturo. Pero tinuro rin sa atin ng ating mentor no, na kung ganoon yung lagi yung approach 
magiging mababaw yung kalidad ng spiritualidad ng buhay ng isang mananampalataya. No? Kaya hindi po siya nakabase talaga. No? Alam natin, naunawaan natin, na ang strong church ay hindi nakabase kung marami yung kanyang attendees o konti yung kanyang attendees. So, alam natin na yung approach natin sa pangangaral ng salita ng Panginoong Diyos na ang approach natin ay yung message natin is all about righteousness. And we all know, kapag namuhay yung isang tao sa righteousness, talagang inspired yung kanyang buhay. And the message concerning righteousness is of course inspirational po ito. Kaya lang, ito pong message na ito ay kumbaga kung ating unawain ay nakafocus sa pagpapatatag, pagpapatibay, sa pagbivil ng spiritualidad ng buhay ng isang tao. No? Transformational yung message natin, building up into the likeness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So yung message na itinuturo po sa atin, sa ating family, ay nagpapatibay ng spiritualidad ng buhay ng isang tao, tumataas yung kalidad. Eka nga, nag-grow tayo sa ating spiritual stature. No? Our right standing before our God. So, what is a strong church? Sabi ng secular, ay merong attendance. Pangalawa, kapag merong daw building at merong own lot yung church. Masasabi daw na yun yung perception nila. Masasabing strong na yung church. At yung pangatlo, kapag may cash. No? Kapag may siguro may naiipon. No? At uh, yun. Kaya nasasabi nila na strong yung church. Sabi naman ng evangelicals, ang um, strong church daw is a self-supporting, self-governing, and self-propagating church. Yun naman ay para sa Evangelicals. So kapag ang isang church no, ay hindi na umaasa sa anyang main church or mother church, no, ito ay nagpapakita na nagiging strong na siya. Kapag yung church ay pagdating sa administration in management, ay meron na niyang sarili no, at hindi na nakakating o nakabase sa main church niya, ito daw ay nagpapakita na malakas na yung iglesia. And of course, kapag yung church ay nagpo-propagate na. So, yun yung base sa evangelicals. Pero tinuro sa atin, sa apostolic, no? ang strong church ay ganito. A strong church is a local church that has become the epicenter and hub of divine activity carrying a spiritual prevailing position to enhance kingdom influence by exercising dominion over the spiritual realm, keeping the heavens open and making it conducive for the Holy Spirit's movement in the region around it and beyond. So, yun, ito po yung itinuturo sa atin. No? So, sa apostolic churches, ito yung breakdown, no? It is a strong governing church, no? A strong governing church is an epicenter. So, when we say epicenter, it is a point from which divine activities fall straight out, no? So nagsisimula do nang gagaling, no? Yung divine activities. At kapag sinabing epicenter, no? It is also it resonate from that place. It resonates from that place. A strong governing church is an epicenter. It is also a hub of divine activities. It holds things together from that place. It is the seat of government. Okay? So, ito po yung uh, breakdown ng uh, ating definition pagdating sa tinatawag na strong church. A strong church is a strong governing church is an epicenter. It carries a prevailing position. It carries a prevailing position. So, a prevailing position 
is not measured by number. It is measured by stature. No? And spiritual stature is a position of influence that gives you a leverage to exercise spiritual authority. And spiritual stature is the result of God's dealings upon your life, upon our lives. No? Yun yung spiritual stature. So corporately, when the churches or the church, churches around gravitate toward the church, then the church has already a stature. No? So nag masasabi natin na merong ng stature yung church na yon if the churches around no gravitates no doon sa uh, church na yon it carries a prevailing position it carries a prevailing position meaning the church is already a force to reckon with to take in consideration in the eyes of the people in the community not because they have numbers, but because of their influence, her stature is continually built up. So, nakikita ito ng community. No? At even yung community, alam nila no? na hindi na basta-basta pwedeng kantiin o galawin no? yung church. Kasi nakikita nila na yung church ay matibay, matatag at lumalakas. So, yun ibig sabihin na it carries a prevailing position. Now, I would like to share this afternoon uh, concerning the characteristic of the two prominent strong governing churches in the book of Acts. I'm sure, kung tayo ay reader ng Bible, especially yung book of Acts, lover tayo ng book of Acts. Eh nga, ang tawag ng iba ay Acts of the Holy Spirit. No? So, ito pong two prominent, strong, governing, prevailing churches ay alam nyo na. No? So, you may guess. So, ang una po is the Jerusalem Church and the second is the Antioch Church. So, ito ngayon yung gusto kong makita natin yung characteristics nitong two prominent strong church. Okay? Unahin natin yung Jerusalem Church. Now, yung Jerusalem Church, makikita po natin, isang karakteristik nito, Jerusalem Church was born in the power of the Holy Spirit. It was born in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, una pa lang, sa Acts chapter 1, verse 8, sabi ng Panginoong Yesus, before he, His ascension to heaven, sabi niya sa mga disciples, and of course, the, the believers, no? sabi niya, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the earth, and to the end of the earth. So, dito pinangako ng Panginoong Jesus na sila'y tatanggap ng kapangyarihan kapag dumating ang banal na Espiritu no? sa kanilang buhay. No? At sila ay magiging witnesses beginning sa Jerusalem. No? Kaya tinawag nating Jerusalem Church. And of course, it happened. So, ang nangyari, these uh, believers, 120 of them, in the upper room, no, sa Jerusalem, they tarred, no, they prayed. Naghintay po sila doon sa pinangako ng ating Panginoong Jesus. And in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were setting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, 
and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay? So, Jerusalem Church, it began at Pentecost with 120 believers in an upper room at Jerusalem. And it was born in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, nakita po natin kung paano naranasan nila yung infilling no, ng banal na Espiritu sa kanilang buhay. The second characteristic of this church is this church, Jerusalem church, was built upon the solid foundation of the Apostles' Doctrine. It was built upon the solid foundation of the Apostles' Doctrine. In the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine, and fellowship in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Okay? So, ang, ang church na ito, the believers of this church, okay, ay talagang sila ay tumutok sa itinuturo ng mga apostol. No? At ito, yung patuloy din nila na ipinapamuhay. So, this church was built upon the solid foundation of the apostles' doctrine. Number three, the number three characteristic of this church, Jerusalem church, based on Acts chapter 2, verse 42, this church ano po, is steadfast and fellowship and prayers. So this church is steadfast and fellowship and prayers. Kaya kapag binasa natin, almost daily ang sabi ng Bible, no? sila ay pumupunta sa temple at sila ay nag-fellowship at sila ay nananalangin. And the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. So, isa pang karakteristik nito, steadfast in fellowship and prayers. Dito po sa... Um, church na ito, no, sa amin dito sa Bethlehem Temple, patuloy din namin ginagawa yung tinatawag na prayer meeting. At nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoong Diyos sapagkat maraming churches, ang challenge po sa kanila ay kung paano magtagumpay no, yung prayer meetings, especially when it comes sa attendance ng prayer meeting. So, thanks be to God. At ako po ay nagagala kasi dito sa church, alam niyo po ba, yung majority ng attendees ng aming prayer meeting ay mga young people. Okay? So, meron kaming mga adult, meron kaming mga elderly na umaattend pag prayer meeting, pero alam niyo po ba, majority ng umaattend ay mga young people. So, purihin ang ating dakilang Diyos na buhay. Balik tayo dito, no? Isang karakteristik nitong uh, Jerusalem Church, kaya sila strong, prevailing, and governing church, is because steadfast in fellowship and prayers yung mga believers sa Jerusalem Church. At I do believe with all of my heart that prayer in the church is indispensable. No? Alam po natin na ito yung eh, nga, backbone ng, ng uh, church, no? yung pananalangin. At yung corporate prayer ay napakahalaga na patuloy na ipinapractice po ng, ng church. So some churches ay ginagawa ito during Sunday mismo. No? Pero po dito sa church ay nakaugalian na po namin, this is part of the culture of our church na ito ay uh, every Friday, ginagawa namin yung prayer meeting. Pang-apat na karakteristik nitong Jerusalem Church, bakit siya strong, prevailing, governing church? Because, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 43, no? another karakteristik, living in the fear of the Lord. 
Verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonder signs were done through the apostles. So living in the fear of the Lord. Hindi po natin ito may sasantabi, no? Na magiging strong ang believer kapag siya ay nabuhay na may banal na pagkatakot sa Diyos. So, corporately, if the church are living in the fear of the Lord, no? what will happen? Patuloy ito na magiging strong, prevailing, and governing church. Next, number five. Another characteristic ng Jerusalem Church ay evident signs and wonders. Evident signs and wonders. Chapter 2, verse 42 to 43. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. So, itong Jerusalem Church, evident po yung signs and wonders. So, this is what we are praying. No? But we believe that in the last days, no? bago pa dumating ang ating Panginoong Jesus to hot up the church, signs and wonders will become natural again. No? sa buhay ng mga churches ng ating Panginoong Jesus. No? Kasi yung Jerusalem Church, isa ito sa nakikita po sa kanila. Evident yung signs and wonders. And we all know na yung signs and wonders ay malakas po ito maghatak ng mga non-believers. No? Isa ito sa nakakapag, nakakapag catch up ng kanilang attention. So, hindi naman natin uh, nililimitahan yung pwedeng gawin ng Panginoong Diyos because I, I do believe that there are times in our ministry meron pa rin mga signs and wonders. Meron pa rin tayong mga pinapanalangin at kapag pinanalangin natin, tumatanggap pa rin ang iba ng instant healing ng kagalingan. No? So, meron pa rin. Pero, darating sa punto, alam po natin, na magiging talagang um, ito ay natural na natural na makikita ng mga tao, ng, ng community na kinilalagyan ng church na mangyayari muli yung signs and wonders. Okay? So, number six. Pang-anin na nakita ko pong karakteristik nitong Jerusalem Church dito sa Acts chapter 2 verse 44 to 46 is this. No? Kung ikukumpara ko po sa ibang mga churches o ibang mga samahan, ito yung isang karakteristik na nakita ko. Unequal companionship. Unequal companionship. Kasi ganito pang pagkasabi. Now all who believe were together. No? Yung mga nanampalataya, sila ay nagsasama-sama. And had all things in common. At to the point, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So, kung ati pong titingnan po dito, grabe yung kanilang tinatawag na uh, companionship. Grabe yung level no? ng kanilang tinatawag na relationship. Kasi to the point na yung mga possessions po nila, no, napakinggan ko, uh, one time, sabi ng ating mentor, marahil ay wala na silang cash na may bigay. No? Kasi very generous yung heart nitong mga believers sa Jerusalem na ayaw nilang makita na minsan isang member nila sa church ay nagihirap, nagihikahos. So sa, sa tindi ng kanilang companionship, gusto nila ay kung anong nararanasan nung mga nakakaahon sa buhay, no? yung maganda yung kalagayan sa buhay, ay maranasan din ng mga kapwa nila mananampalataya. So that's why nagbibigay sila, nagbibigayan sila to the point na sabi ng ating mentor siguro 
naubusan na ng cash. Kaya ipinagbibili nila yung kanilang mga possessions and goods. At ito ay pinagbabahagi, bahagi po nila no? sa kanilang mga um, kapwa mananampalataya. Ganoon yung kanilang tinatawag na closeness. Ganoon yung kanilang companionship. Ganoon yung kanilang um, uh, treatment sa bawat isa. No? At alam po natin, hindi ito basta-basta magagawa ng isang church. No? Na, of course, alam natin sa ang setup sa sa mga churches ngayon may mga nakakaahon, may mga may mga nahihirapan, no? May mga member tayo na magandang kalidad ng buhay sa economic aspect ng buhay, pero meron tayong mga member na talagang nahihirapan din, no? Pero yung church na ito, kapag tiningnan po natin, ano, ang sabi ng ng Bible ay ito. So, and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. No? So, talagang inaabot nila yung may mga pangangailangan at gusto nila sama-sama silang nakakaranas ng uh, maganda no? na, na kalagayan when it comes to economic aspects ng buhay. So, ito yung ating nakita dito, no? Unequal yung kanilang companionship. Verse 46, So, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they eat their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. So, nowadays, meron mga churches na kuminsan ay walang pakialaman. Okay? So, gumanda sa gumanda yung buhay ng iba so yung iba bahala din kayo sa buhay ninyo no pero ito po nakita natin dito sa Jerusalem Church kung kaya sila ay naging is wrong sapagkat ang tindi ng kanilang sabahan ang gusto nila sabay-sabay sila na, na nakakaranas na naubangat sa ekonomiya ng kanilang buhay ibang klase yung level ng kanilang companionship that's why an equal companionship Okay? So, number seven na karakteristik na aking pong nakita ng Jerusalem Church sa ito. Growing number of saved Christ followers. Acts chapter 2 verse 47. Ang sabi po ay ganito. Praising God and having favor with all the people in the Lord added to the church daily those who are being, those who were being saved. So, grabe, no? Growing yung number ng mga naliligtas na tagasunod ng ating Panginoong Jesus. At napakatindi kasi almost every day, uh, hindi ko masasabing almost kasi daily nga pala eh. No? Daily, no? Araw-araw ay merong nakakakilala na idaragdag po sa kanila. So, growing of saved Christ followers. Pangwalo, nakipong nakita ay ito no isa pang karakteristik nitong church na ito kung bakit siya strong prevailing and governing church itong Jerusalem church kasi pagdating sa leadership makikita natin regulated yung leadership nila so uh, what i'm trying to say is yung pagdating sa leadership ay or other uh, nasa order, orderly, okay, orderly or regulated yung kanila pong leadership. So, alam natin na yung church na ito, no, ay nagsimula sa Jerusalem, that's why yung Jerusalem church ang siyang naging command center ng early churches. And we all know that this Jerusalem church is a strong prevailing governing church kasi tayo na mga believers sa ngayon at yung mga churches, local churches na kinabibilangan natin sa ngayon ay masasabi po nating bunga ng church na ito sapagkat dito nagsimula yung church ng ating Panginoong Jesus. So during the early early days ng church, ito yung command center. Jerusalem Church is the command center. Jerusalem Church is the seat of the church government. No? The seat of the church government of the church council. Itong Jerusalem Church. 
At dito po sa mga uh, scriptural reference that I would I would uh, like to read before us, ay makikita natin kung gaano ka-regulated, ka-orderly yung leadership sa Jerusalem Church. No? At makikita rin po natin kung gaano nila ino-honor yung leadership. No? Especially itong tinatawag na, na Church Council dito sa Jerusalem Church. Ah, una, nakita ko dito, meron akong, meron akong map dito pero marahil ay maliit. at hindi po ninyo ma- makita na maigi. Pero itong map na ito is all about the missionary journey of Peter. So, we all know na bago pa man magkaroon ng missionary journey si Paul, si Peter ay nagkaroon na ng missionary journey. So, sa map na ito, makikita natin na si Peter nagsimula ng kanyang journey doon sa Jerusalem. specifically sa Jerusalem Church, no? At siya ay pumunta sa mga lugar na kung saan ibinahagi niya ang salita ng Panginoong Diyos. No? After na ito ay may bahagi niya, so si Peter ay bumalik sa Jerusalem Church sapagkat yung Jerusalem Church ang siyang command center uh, sa panahong yaon at si Peter ay nag-report, no? ng kanyang mission. So, ito po yung Peter's report to the church at Jerusalem. Sa Acts chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. So, the apostles and the other believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. Verse 2, When Peter went to Jerusalem, Those who were in favor of circumcising, circumcising Gentiles criticized him, saying, You were a guest in the home of uncircumcised Gentiles, and you even ate with them. So Peter gave them a complete account of what had happened from the very beginning. So dito ang, uh, what I would like you to see here, sa Acts chapter 11 verse 1 to 4 na pakatapos ni Peter na kanyang missionary journey bumalik po siya sa Jerusalem Church sa Jerusalem Council para ilahad niya yung kanyang report so that is of course a sign of honor and respect ni Peter okay at ang kanyang report ay nagpapakita po dito na yung salvation is not just for the Jews. Kasi alam natin na yun yung una na parang uh, nasa puso ng mga early believers in Jerusalem na yung salvation are, are for the Jews only. Pero sa uh, missionary journey ni Peter, meron siyang karanasan na binago ng Panginoong Diyos yung kanyang um, Uh, perspective when it comes to salvation, that salvation is not just for the Jews but also for the Gentiles. Okay? So, ito yung content ng uh, report ni Peter. Pero isang makita natin dito how Peter uh, reported to the Jerusalem uh, Council or Jerusalem Church being the center of the early church. Okay? During the time of Paul, during the time of Paul, when Paul was converted, no? nang makonvert si Paul, halos hindi siya paniwalaan ng mga believers. No? Especially yung mga believers sa Jerusalem. At alam niyo po ba that it was Barnabas ang siyang ginamit ng Panginoong Diyos no? para ipakilala ng lubusan si Paul sa church, especially sa church council. So Barnabas introduced Paul to the church and the church council at Jerusalem. Makikita natin yan sa Acts chapter 9, verse 26 to 28. Saul, Saul went to Jerusalem 
and tried to join the disciples. No? Pumunta siya ng Jerusalem after his conversion sabagat gusto niya mag-join sa mga disciples. But they would not believe that he was a disciple. Di naniniwala yung mga mga believers sa Jerusalem na siya nga ay converted that disciple na and they were all afraid of him sapagkat kilala si Saul no? na siya ay isa sa mga great persecutor ng early Christianity or early Christians. So verse 27, Then Barnabas came to his help and took him to the apostles. He explained to them how Saul had seen the Lord on the road and that the Lord had spoken to him. He also told them how boldly Saul or Saul had preached in the name of Jesus in Damascus. And so Saul stayed with them and went all over Jerusalem preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. So here, makita po natin dito sa Acts chapter 9 verse 26 to 28 na si Barnabas no ay isa sa ginamit no as a sign of honor and respect na ipakilala niya sa church council sa elders no and apostles sa Jerusalem church itong si Saul na kung saan ay kaka-convert pa lamang so hindi ito halos mapaniwalaan but si Barnabas ay dumating at ito ay na-introduce niya. And after that, pinanggap si Saul na bilang isang disciple din ng Panginoong Jesus. Okay? Dito rin, makikita po natin the Jerusalem Church. No? Another one, the Jerusalem Church being the center no? of the early church. Kasi Barnabas was sent by the church council to take lead the Antioch Church. Mababasa natin ito dito sa um, verse 19 okay, verse 19 some of the believers who were scattered by the persecution which took place when Stephen was killed went as far as Punisia Cyprus and Antioch telling the message to Jews only but other believers who were from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and proclaimed the message to Gentiles also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus so the Lord's power was with them and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord Verse 22, the news about this reached the church in Jerusalem, so they sent Barnabas to Anchok. Okay, so the result of the persecution na nangyari, no? yung mga believers, sila ay nagkahiwalay-hiwalay because of the persecution sa panahon, no? during the time of Stephen. Nang si Stephen ay mamatay. But other believers na galing sa Cyprus, no? yung ibang mga believers kasi, they preach the good news to the Jews only. But there are believers coming from Cyprus and Cyrene, pumunta sa Antioch at ipinangaral po nila yung message, hindi lamang sa mga Hujo, but also to the Gentiles. Then, ang nangyari, yung mga Gentiles ay sumampalataya din sa ating Panginoong Yesus. The Lord's power was with them. In verse 21, great number of people believe and turn to the Lord. At ang balitang ito ay nakarating po sa Jerusalem Church, which is the, the, the center of the early church. So the news about this reached the church in Jerusalem so, ang ginawa ngayon ng Jerusalem Church, they sent Barnabas to Antioch para siya ang magpastor o mag-take lead sa church na yon. So, ito yung nangyari. No? So, Barnabas was sent by the church council to take lead 
the Antioch Church. Now, in Acts chapter 11, verse 19 to 26, pagdating naman doon ni Barnabas, no? when he arrived and saw how God had blessed the people, he was glad and urged them all to be faithful and true to the Lord with all their hearts. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and many people will wrath to the Lord. Verse 25, Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, he took him to Anchok. Ang matagpuan ni Barnabas si Saul. Okay. So, dinala niya ngayon si Saul sa Anchok. And for a whole year, the two met with the people of the church and taught a large group. So, nagkaroon po ngayon ng tandem no? si Barnabas at saka si, si Saul or si Paul. No? It was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. Okay? So, sa matinding tandem ng dalawang ito, sa Antioch, mas lalong tumibay, lumago yung church sa Antioch. Now, meron isang pangyayari sa sa Antioch Church na kung saan ay nagpapatuloy na ito'y lumalago, no? pero may isang issue na naganap sa Antioch Church. Antioch Church ay kumbaga siya ay parang uh, daughter church nitong Jerusalem Church. So dito sa uh, Book of Acts chapter 15, okay, ganito ang nangyari. Some men came from Judea to Antioch and started teaching the believers. So please take note that by that time sa Antioch, no, matagal lang nandoon sila Barnabas at saka si Paul. Nandoon na po sila at nagtuturo at dumadami yung mga believers. Pero meron ding mga believers na galing sa Judea, of course sa Jerusalem Church, no, na dumating and started teaching the believers. Nagsimula din silang magturo. Then, ang kanilang teaching, you cannot be saved unless you are circumcised as the law of Moses requires. So, verse 2, Paul and Barnabas got into a fierce argument with them about this. So, it was decided that Paul and Barnabas and some of the others in Antioch should go to Jerusalem and see the apostles and elders about this matter. So dito natin makikita, no? nagkaroon ng isang doctrinal issue sa Antioch Church. No? Dahil sa merong mga believers na galing sa uh, church sa Jerusalem, sa Judea, no? at sila ay nagturo, at ang kanilang tinuturo, ay you cannot be saved unless you are circumcised as the law of Moses requires. At hindi ito ngayon. No? Ito ay in conflict sa tinuturo ni Paul at sa ni Barnabas. Okay? And because of this, nagkaroon ng decision, no? yung, yung uh, uh, itong uh, mga leaders sa Antioch Church na ito ay isolve ang issue na ito doon sa Jerusalem Church. So, Paul and Barnabas got into a fierce argument with them about this. So, it was decided that Paul and Barnabas and some of the others in Antioch should go to Jerusalem and see the apostles and elders about this matter. Okay, so dito natin makikita no? na kapag merong isang issue na hindi kayang may solve doon sa daughter church no? at ito ay pwedeng mag-cause ng pagkawasak ng church no? kailangan nilang bumalik no? kailangan nilang patulong no? kailangan nilang iparisolve ito sa kanilang uh, main church and it is also a sign of honor and respect so ito po yung kanilang ginawa Okay, so being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria 
describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, so dumating sila sa Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders. Ito yung uh, center ng early church, the Jerusalem church. And they reported all things that God had done with them. Okay? So, yung, yung, yung kaganapang ito na pag ng issue ng isang doctrinal issue no, ay ginawa, binalik, at humingi ng tulong no, at ito'y pinarisolve sa uh, tinatawag po natin the center of the church which is the Jerusalem church. Okay? So, ito yung makikita natin na isang karakteristik ng Jerusalem church ay regulated yung kanilang leadership. So, yun yung una. What about the second church? The characteristics of the two prominent strong governing churches in the book of Acts. First, Jerusalem. Now, tingnan po natin yung pangalawang church than other than the Antioch Church. Okay? The Antioch Church. Okay? So, ito yung, ito yung Antioch na ito is that the Antioch of Syria And this is the Antioch of Syria, I should say, not the Antioch of Pisidia. Okay? Ang Antioch na ito is a major trade center in the ancient world. Heavily populated ito by Greeks. It eventually became a strong Christian center. Tradition holds that the first Gentile church, yung pinakauna na church na mga hintel, was founded in Antioch. So in this place, the believers were first called Christians. In the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 26. At Barnabas initially provided leadership for the Antioch church. Tinuro sa atin ng ating mentor that eventually si Paul ang siyang naging uh, nag-provide ng leadership dito kasi ginawa niya ito na ministry base. Okay? During the time na si Barnabas, yung kanilang partnership, nagiwalay na sila ni Barnabas. Okay? But Barnabas initially provided leadership for the Antioch Church. Now, Antioch Church, it became the headquarters for the Gentile Church. At as I have said, it was Paul's base of operations. At meron po ako ditong um, map sa muli. At marahil ito ay maliit. Pero this map is all about Paul's missionary journeys. Kung makikita natin sa map na ito, yung first missionary journey ni Paul, yung second missionary journey ni Paul, at third missionary journey ni Paul, nagsimula po siya dito sa Antioch Church. Okay? At pagkatapos, marami siyang lugar na pinuntahan sa first missionary journey, bumalik din siya sa Antioch Church. No? The same with the second missionary journey ni Paul, nagsimula pa rin siya sa Antioch Church. Okay? At bumalik din siya sa Antioch Church. The same with the third missionary journey ni Paul. Makita natin doon sa kanyang first missionary journey, second missionary journey, no? may mga pagkakataon na dumadaan siya, pumupunta siya sa Jerusalem Church para siya ay uh, probably mag Pero babalik pa rin siya doon sa Antioch Church. Kasi nga, yung Antioch Church ay naging ministry base no? of operation ni Paul. Okay? So, ngayon, tingnan natin yung some characteristics of this Antioch Church. Sapagkat ito ay nakikita natin na ito ay isang strong, no? prevailing and governing church. na eka nga, parang dumating sa punto na parang mas naging mas matatag at mas matibay pa no? yung, uh, yung Antioch Church. Okay? Comparing sa ibang churches. Okay? So, it was pioneered by the persecuted and scattered believers from Cyprus and Cyrene. So, we all know na bago pa man makarating doon si Paul, 
Nandun na yung Antioch Church. In impact si Paul nakarating doon because Barnabas took him from Tarsus. No? Kasi si Paul, no, nung siya ay uh, nangangaral sa Jerusalem, no, halos uh, mainit yung kanyang pangaral at talagang gusto siyang patayin ng mga tao kaya siya ay pinapunta no ng, ng, ng uh, probably ng mga believers or elders sa Jerusalem sa Tarsus that's why nang si Barnabas ay inassign ng Jerusalem Council sa Antioch nang makita niya yung kalagayan ng Antioch kinuha niya si Paul sa Tarsus pagdating po nila sa Antioch uh, yung Antioch Church ay nandoon na yung mga believers. That's why Antioch Church was pioneered by the persecuted and scattered believers from Cyprus and Cyrene. Makikita natin sa Acts chapter um, verses 19, ano? Okay. Acts chapter 11 verses 19. To 21, some of the believers who were scattered by the persecution which took place when Stephen was killed went as far as Punisia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message to Jews only. But other believers who were from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and proclaimed the message to Gentiles, also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. So the Lord's power was with them and a great number of people believed and turned through the Lord. So, napakalinaw po dito na yung mga believers sa Antioch was pioneered by the persecuted and scattered believers from Cyprus and Cyrene. Isa sa mga karakteristik ng Antioch Church is this. Open-hearted preaching of good news. Acts 19, verse 19. Some of the believers who were scattered by the persecution which took place when Stephen was killed went as far as Polisha, Cyprus, and Antioch telling the message to Jews only, but other believers who were from Cyprus in Cyrene went to Antioch and proclaimed the message to Gentiles also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. Open-hearted preaching of good news. Wala po silang pinipili na race. Wala silang pinipili na anumang uh, status ng tao, anumang antas ng pamumuhay ng tao, lahat ng lahi. Ipinapangaral nila yung good news. Open-hearted preaching of the good news. Mayaman man o mahirap, Ano man ang kalagayan sa buhay, ano man ang lahi, ano man ang rasa, pinapangaral po nila yung good news. Isa po sa karakteristik yan, ang Antioch Church. Pangalawa, they embrace Jesus not just as Savior but also as Lord. Okay? They embrace Jesus not just as Savior but also as Lord. They turn to the Lord. No? They turned to the Lord. At the preaching of Christ, they turned to the Lord. There was a true turning. There was through repentance, a change of mindset, turning from a worldly view to a kingdom view. Another one, they purpose in heart to continue with the Lord. No? That's why they embrace Jesus not just as Savior but also as Lord. Okay, they purpose in heart to continue with the Lord. When Barnabas was sent up by the apostles from Jerusalem to help the new believers, he came and had seen the grace of God. He was glad and encouraged them. All that with purpose of heart, they should continue with the Lord. So, nang makilala nilang Panginoong Jesus, no matter what persecutions come sa kanilang buhay, ano mang circumstances, they continue with the Lord. Another one, they were willing to be tough. Verse 26, Later when Barnabas brought up Saul to work with him, sabi po ng Bible, for a whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. 
Pangapat, letter D, they were genuine Christians. No? Christ wants the result. The disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Another characteristic of this church, they were willing to be discipled. They were willing to be discipled. In Acts chapter 11, verse 21, and in verse 24, we are told, A great number believed and were brought to the Lord. But in verse 26, a great number of people were thought and discipled. Ang ganda po kapag ang lahat ng membro natin sa si church ay gustong magpaturo, gustong magpa-disciples. Meaning to say, ang kanilang puso ay mapagpakumbaba, teachable ang kanilang puso. No? Napakaganda kapag ganoon yung character, ganoon yung attitude ng mga members natin sa loob ng church. Ito, isa ito sa karakteristik ng Antioch Church kung bakit sila naging strong, prevailing, and governing church. So when he found him, he took him to Antioch and for a whole year, ang sabi ng Bible, the two met with the apostle of the church and taught a large group. Wow! So, large group, not a small group. Ibig sabihin, marami na mga mananampalataya ang gustong matuto, gustong magpaturo. It was at Antioch nga that the believers were first called Christians. So, makikita natin na yung preaching is heralding the gospel while teaching involves explaining the contents of the scripture. So, those who have been reached by preaching must be instructed in the scriptures para sila tumuloy-tuloy sa Panginoong, Panginoong Jesus. So, most of the work of the church, no? like yung ginawa ni Barnabas at saka ni, ni Paul, is teaching rather than preaching. No? Kasi nga, yung isang uh, tao, no, once niya lang na mapakinggan yung message of the gospel at ito ay mali, maliwanag na kanyang napakinggan at naunawaan no? once lang ito mapakinggan at siya ay nag-response so at that point siya ay ligtas na pero kasunod noon kailangan niya lumago kailangan niya na uh, maging spiritually mature lumago siya sa kanyang spiritual stature at ito ay hindi lamang nangahulugan ng isang beses na pakikinig at pag-aaral. No? Nangangailangan ito ng series of teaching, series of studies. Okay? So, series of studies is the best practice when it comes to teaching. No? Kasi nga, it is comprehensive and progressive. Okay? So, yun yung ginawa nila Paul at sa kani Barnabas nang sabi ng Bible no? for a whole year the two met with the people of the church and taught a large group number four characteristic ang Antioch Church ay equipping church multiplying disciples and leadership okay Acts 11 verse 26 when he found him, he took him to Antioch, and for a whole year, the two met with the people of the church and taught a large group. It was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. So, this church is equipping church. No? Kung kaya, patuloy na nagmamultiply yung mga disciples at yung leadership ng church na ito. Also, pang lima, worshipful and prayerful, prayerful church. Okay? Kaya ito ay strong, governing, and prevailing church. Acts 13, 1 to 3. Now, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manain, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarchs, and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now, separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So, dito makita natin that this church, no, 
was a worshipful and prayerful church. Isa ito sa kanilang karakteristik. Number one, this church is a spirit-led church. A spirit-led church. Ang sabi po ng Acts 13, 1-3, Now, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Siren, Manain, who had been brought up with Hero, the Tetrarch, Saint Saul, as they ministered to the Lord in past ten, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the works to which I have called them. So, this church is a spirit-led church. Another characteristic nitong um, Antioch Church. That's why this church became a strong, prevailing, and governing church. Number seven, ang church na ito is apostolic and prophetic in nature. Apostolic and prophetic in nature. Why? Acts 13, 1-2, they adhered to the teachings of the apostles and listened to their prophets. So, now in the church that was at Antioch, verse Acts 13, 1-2, there were certain prophets na? and teachers. So, they adhered to the teachings of the apostles and listened to their prophets. Kaya naman, ang church na ito ay naging strong, prevailing, and governing church. Number eight. Number eight. Okay? At ito po yung panghuli. Number eight, ang church na ito, isa pang karakteristik, plurality and leadership, but had a lead person or set man. Okay? Maraming leader, no? plurality and leadership, pero merong lead person or merong set man. No? Also, it is also true sa Jerusalem Church. Makikita po natin. Ano? So, dito sa Antioch Church, Barnabas wasn't as a lead person. Okay? Uh, Acts 13 verses, uh, I mean, Acts 11 verse 22. The news about this rich, the church in Jerusalem, so they sent Barnabas to Antioch. So, Barnabas was sent as a lead person dito sa Antioch Church. Now, Acts 13, 1-2. Now, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. So, marami. May mga prophets, may mga teachers. No? Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Siren, Manain, no? who had been brought up with Herod. So, marami. Plurality of leadership. Pero merong set man or lead person. Okay? And uh, nakita natin ano, na si Barnabas, yung una na nag-provide. Initially, no, si Barnabas ang nag-provide ng leadership for the congregation at Antioch. Okay, here we will see ano, yung leadership of the early church sa Jerusalem church and even dito sa Antioch church. Okay? So, merong lead person or set man. Bagabat maraming mga leaders because this church is an equipping church. Kasi naman, yung mga believers ay were willing to be equipped. No? We're willing to be tough. So, therefore, dumarami yung mga leaders. So, this church, no? both Jerusalem church and the Antioch church, no? has plurality of leaders, but merong tinatawag na lead person or set man. So, una, si Barnabas initially provided leadership for the congregation at Antioch. Si Peter naman, si Peter naman, yung naging lead person, o kaya lead, he lead the apostolic mission to the Jews. No? Si Peter naman, ang siyang nanguna pagdating sa mission sa mga Hudyo. Though, Merong pagkakataon na ginamit ng Panginoong Diyos si Peter sa mga Gentiles. Si Paul, no? Si Paul naman ay naging lead person o lead the apostolic mission to the Gentiles. At mababasa natin yan, napakalinaw. Galatians chapter 2, verse 7 to 8. On the contrary, they saw that God had given me the task of reaching the gospel to the Gentiles. 
This is Paul speaking. Huh? Just as he had given Peter the task of preaching the gospel to the Jews. No? Si Peter binigyan ng task, pangalan yung gospel sa Jews. Si Paul binigyan ng task, ipangalan yung gospel sa Gentiles. So verse 8, For by God's power, I was made an apostle to the Gentiles. Just as Peter was made an apostle to the Jews. Okay? Barnabas initially provided leadership in the congregation at Anjok. Peter led the apostolic mission to the Jews. Then Paul led the apostolic mission to the Gentiles. Okay? And the question is, sino ba yung uh, lead person or set man sa Jerusalem church? Especially sa Jerusalem council. So makikita natin that it was James. James, the brother of Jesus. So James provided leadership for the congregation at Jerusalem Church, which is the command center of the early church. No? Bagamat hindi natin uh, madalas na makita, no? madalas na makita na binabanggit yung pangalan ni James. It was almost sa mga pagdating ay nababanggit si Peter, si Paul, si Barnabas at marami pang mga elders and apostles na nababanggit, no? Si James nababanggit din pero karamihan niya sa mga mga Kristiyano sa ngayon, no, ay hindi nila uh, nakita agad ito at nalaman na nababasa kaagad nila ito, no? Pero dito nakita natin that James, no, provided leadership for the congregation of Jerusalem Church yung command center of the early church. So James, as the lead person in the church council at Jerusalem, mababasa natin yan dito sa Acts chapter 15, verses 1 to 21. Kung paano itong si James, no, being the lead person or the set man of the Jerusalem church, which is the command center of the early church. Mahaba-haba ito kapatid. Alam ko, nagpas na ako sa oras. <laughs> but but uh, uh, please, no? uh, hayaan nung basahin ko po uh, sa inyo. No? So, some men came from Judea to Antioch and he started teaching the believers, you cannot be saved unless you are circumcised as the law of Moses requires. Paul and Barnabas got into a fierce argument with them about this. So, it was decided that Paul and Barnabas and some of the others in Antioch should go to Jerusalem and see the apostles and elders about this matter. So they were sent on their way by the church. And as they went through Ponitia and Samaria, they reported how the Gentiles in turn to God. This news brought great joy to all the believers. When they arrived in Jerusalem, okay, the center, no? The, the, the center of the early church, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders to whom they told all that God had done through them. But some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees and stood up and said the Gentiles must be circumcised and told to obey the law of Moses. So verse 5 says, no? some of the believers who belong to the party of the Pharisees, no? it may be na ito ay mga believers na, mga believers na kaya lang sila ay una no they, they were converted believers marahil sila ay dating mga Pharisees kaya meron pa rin meron pa rin na pinanghawakan sila katulad ng paniniwala nila before okay so but some of the believers who belong to the parties of the Pharisees stood up and said the Gentiles must be circumcised and told to obey the law of Moses. Okay? So the apostles and the elders met together to consider this question. Ito na ngayon yung tinatawag nating uh, meeting ng church council na sa Jerusalem church. After a long debate, mahaba-habang pagdidibate, Peter stood up and said, My friends, you know, that a long time ago, God chose me from among you to preach the good news to the Gentiles so that they could hear and believe. 
And God, who knows, the thoughts of everyone showed His approval of the Gentiles by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as He had to us. He made no difference between us in them. He forgave their sins because they believed. So then, why do you now want to put God to the test by laying a load on the backs of the believers, which neither our ancestors nor we ourselves were able to carry? No. We believe and are saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus as they are. Then, verse 12, the whole group was silent as they heard Barnabas and Paul report all the miracles and wonders that God had performed through them among the Gentiles. Verse 13, when they had finished speaking, ito na, James spoke up. Listen to me, my friends. Simon has just explained how God first showed his care for the Gentiles by taking from among them a people to belong to him. The words of the prophets agree completely with this. As the scripture says, After this I will return, says the Lord, and restore the kingdom of David. I will reveal its ruins and make it strong again. And so, all the rest of the human race will come to me. All the Gentiles will, whom I have called to be my own. So says the Lord, who made this known long ago. Verse 19, It is my opinion, James went on, that we should not trouble the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write a letter telling them not to eat any food that is ritually unclean because it had been offered to idols to keep themselves from sexual immorality and not to eat any animal that has been strangled or any blood. For the law of Moses has been read for a very long time in the synagogues every Sabbath, and, ev and, and his words are fixed in every town. So, dito po natin makikita, mga kapatid, no? that James no? is the set man or the lead person saan? Sa Jerusalem church. Okay? So, nakita po natin yung pangyayari no? sa, Jerusalem, uh, sa Jerusalem Church. No? Una, nagkaroon ng debate. No? Nagkaroon ng debate. Then, Peter spoke. Nagsalita din sila Barnabas at Paul. No? Pagkatapos, nagsalita si James. No? Nang magsalita si James, the lead person of the council, No? concluded and decided at makita natin dito no one ever opposed the dispute was settled okay so nakita natin na si James yung talagang uh, kinikilala nila as the set man and the lead person of the Jerusalem church or the Jerusalem council itself Dito rin, makikita natin yung form of government. At ito yung tinuturo sa atin ng ating pong mentor. So the form of church government uh, here is theocratic, not democratic. Okay? Kasi isang makikita natin, there is no division of the house na ginawa nila. No? After the debates, no? at Pinakita yung side ng kabila, pinakita yung side ng kabila, no? Hindi dumating sa punto na magkaroon ng division of the house. Wala yung who are in favor that the Gentiles must be circumcised, no? Wala. There are no majority and minority. So therefore, yung form of government ng Jerusalem Church, okay? Ay ano? Theocratic form of government. That is why It is a strong, prevailing, and governing church. So dito makikita natin, the church is governed by the absolute truth. When James spoke, he quoted from the Bible. No? From the word of God itself. So dito makikita natin that the church, 
the Jerusalem Church, Jerusalem Council, is governed by the absolute truth, the Word of God, that the laws of men, traditions, or customs, no? neither the experiences nor the convictions of men, okay, ay hindi po nakaka-influensya. No? Kasi ang nag-govern is an other than the Word of God. Dito rin, makikita natin that there is plurality of leadership kasi nga merong mga elders, merong mga apostles, ito ay church councils, no? So, there is plurality of leadership yet lead by the set man or lead person known to be the appointed of God and respected and honored by the congregation as the leader or the father of the house. At dito, sa kalagayan ng Jerusalem Church, it was James who is the lead person or set man of the Jerusalem Church and even the church sa Antioch. Okay? Isa pa po na gusto kong makita natin, no? bakit si James no? ay talagang highly honored as the lead person or set man. Kasi ito po, ha? Nakita ko rin, na nabasa ko rin, na even Paul himself, okay? Even Paul himself, just like after ng kanyang third missionary journey, okay? Ng kanyang third missionary journey, Paul, in spite of his tremendous accomplishment, alam naman po natin, ang tindi ng accomplishment ni, ni Apostle Paul, ang daming churches ang naiplant niya, ang daming niyang na-disciples, and in fact, ang daming niyang naisulat, no? at halos kalahati no? ng uh, New Testament ay naisulat ni Paul. Pero isang makikita natin dito, Paul, in spite of his tremendous accomplishment, he paid honor in respect to James. Talagang napakatindi ng character at behavior nitong si Paul. No? Sa kabila ng tremendous accomplishment na meron siya. Pero alam niya pa rin yung dapat kilalanin as the lead person, as the set man no? of the Jerusalem church or as the set man of the house. Sa kabila po ng tremendous accomplishment. Hindi katulad sa panahon sa ngayon, no? Kapag yung ibang mga pastor ay talagang namayang pagna sa ministry, marami ng accomplishment, naging naging palasak na yung pangalan, nako, dumarating sa punto na kahit na yung lead person or lead man, kahit na yung kanyang mentor ay hindi niya na mai-honor at may galang. Iba po si Paul, no? Iba si Paul. Kasi si Paul despite ng tremendous accomplishment niya, he paid honor in respect to James. So after his third missionary journey, no, siya ay bumalik sa Jerusalem Church. no, He made a way to report to James. At alam nyo, mapanganib yung kanyang pagpunta sa Jerusalem Church. no, Kasi by the time, marami nagbabanta sa buhay ni Paul. And yet, kasi gusto niya na mag-report sa set man of the house. Gusto niya mag-report kay James. Okay? So, he made a way to report to James disregarding the risk of heading to Jerusalem. Mababasa natin niya kapatid sa Acts chapter 2, chapter 21, I should say, verse 7 to 26. Okay? Ito po yung last um, uh, scriptural reference na aking babasahin. And I will end. Okay? So dito makikita po natin ha? 21 verse 7 to 26 We continued our voyage Selling from Tyre to Ptolemais Where we greeted the believers And stayed with them for a day On the following day We left and arrived in Caesarea There we stayed at house of Philip the Evangelist One of the seven men who had been chosen as helpers in Jerusalem. He had four and many daughters who proclaimed God's message. We had been there for several days when a prophet named Agabus arrived from Judea. He came to us, took Paul's belt, tied up his own feet and hands with it, and said, 
This is what the Holy Spirit says. The owner of this belt will be tied up in this way by the Jews in Jerusalem, and they will hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the others there begged Paul not to go to Jerusalem. But he answered, What are you doing, crying like this and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be tied up in Jerusalem, but even to die there for the sake of the Lord Jesus. We could not convince him. So we gave up and said, May the Lord's will be done. After spending some time there, we got our things ready and left for Jerusalem. So the disciple from Caesarea also went with us and took us to the house of the man we were going to stay with, Nazum from Cyprus, who had been a believer since the early days. Ito na, verse 17. When we arrived in Jerusalem, so bumalik na sila sa Jerusalem, the believers welcome us warmly. Of course, the, the, the Jerusalem church. Verse 8, the next day, Paul went with us to see James. So, see? So, si Paul, hinanap niya si James, the set man, the lead person. And all the church elders were present. Paul greeted them and gave a complete report of everything that God had done among the Gentiles through his work. So, see? Nakita natin dito, that despite of Paul's tremendous accomplishment, no, alam niya kung paano i-honor at i-respect yung set man of the house. Nag-report pa rin siya. Verse 20, after hearing him, they all praised God, then they said, Brother Paul, no, you can see how many thousands of Jews have become believers and how devoted they all are to the law. They have been told that you have been teaching all the Jews who live in Gentile Countries abandon the law of Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or follow the Jewish customs. They are sure to hear that you have arrived. What should be done then? This is what we want you to do. There are four men here who have taken a vow. Go along with them and join them in the ceremony of purification and pay their expenses. Then they will be able to shave their heads. In this way, Everyone will know that there is no truth in any of the things that they have been told about you, but that you yourself live in accordance with the law of Moses. But as for the Gentiles who have become believers, we have sent them a letter telling them, we decided that they must not eat any food that has been offered to idols or any blood or any animal that has been strangled and that they must keep themselves from sexual immorality. So Paul took the men and the next day performed the ceremony of the purification with them. So here we see, na pagkatapos bigyan ng instruction ni James, si Paul, si Paul ay sumunod kay James. No? Then he went into the temple and gave notice of how many days it would be until the end of the period of purification when we sacrifice would be offered for each one of them. So, Verse 27, But just when the seven days were about to come to an end, some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul in the temple. They stirred up the whole crowd and grabbed Paul. Makita po natin no, kung paano bago pa si Paul uh, maging prisoners, nakita po natin kung paano naman si Paul, yung kanyang character, yung kanyang attitude kung paano niya i-honor yung set man or lead person ng Jerusalem Church. So mga kapatid, maraming salamat po sa pakikinig no? dito sa ating pag-aaral sa ngayon. Sa hapong ito, pagpalain tayo ng ating nakilang Diyos na buhay. God bless SED family. God bless you and God bless your family. Were you blessed with the message today? If so, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell button below for updates. Thank you for watching and see you next streaming.